this this arrived. I've been yeah. I'm waiting to crack it open for two reasons. It, well, I'm holding it for two reasons. First off, um, I really want to see uh, what uh, what it's like with the with the big software update because I, I I think that's massive and very 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 important. Um, so going ahead and testing and working with it now would be one thing, but we're just days away, right? We are we are just days away, and uh, since you haven't broken the cellophane on your camera yet, <laughs> when you, when you do, the yeah. anticipation will be, I mean, it'd be amazing. But then with the results that you get, I think you're going to be really impressed. Uh, whether you're using the old software or the new software, you're still impressed. Um, but I think that the new software does is really makes it that much easier and overcomes one of the biggest objections, which is stitch lines. And and everybody has the issue of stitch lines it's yeah it's not just you know it's not just this unit but um that's turned into the one bugaboo for everything and then a lot of has to do with just the more cameras you put on it that have to try and seam <laughs> <laughs> lines and based on your distances and uh so on and so forth so yeah. um i remember seeing the unit and i was really really excited by it because of the 3D capability on top of the 360 and the yeah. 3D audio built into it, which is really, uh, really important as well, I feel. Um, and that was back at uh, CES. Right. Right. I want to talk to you and I saw it there and I saw the demo and I liked it a lot. And the kinds of demos that I saw were um, not surprising. It was very much sort of action photography, outdoor photography, things like that. But the reason I wanted to talk to you in person that it will be interesting to ask a little bit about um, other kinds of usage and specifically um, using it for we'll call it more indoor based kinds of things or more detailed work or or where you would see using this for uh, training or um, inside in inside live events and sure. things like that. So I figured that'd be a different kind of thing that you're probably used to showing off the uh, the camera for. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you that, that we're really impressed with how wide the, the usages are of the camera. Now, to some extent, that's great for us because we have so many people using it in so many different verticals. In some points for us, it's, it makes it a little bit harder for us when we talk about targeting that next generation of creator because um, I think the surprise for me is that we haven't had more creative content um, being shared into the market. And I think what we're seeing is it's still difficult. Like I, people don't really understand the complexities of virtual reality video versus 360 2D video. And so regardless of which vertical you're in, you're making content, you're probably pushing that up to YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo, right? Because that's the, that's kind of the de facto right now, mobile, I'll loosely call it VR platform. Yeah. Um, sorry for the air quotes, that was bad. Um, <laughs> but, um, the, most of the viewers who are watching that content are watching it on a flat 2d screen, either their computer or their tablet, or maybe even their phone, just dragging it around. So they're not necessarily seeing the impact or the benefit of VR video. They're seeing what's become kind of a common use of 360 video. And so what we get excited is every time puts, people put it in a headset, they get a different experience. They're like, oh, wow, I didn't know what I was missing, right? right? So when you see that 3D <clears throat> and you, it, it basically resembles what you see in life every day, you get it. Short of putting the video in a headset, you're like, okay, it's another 360 video. I, I think, uh, and that's why I wanted to bring it up because um, I happen to be focused uh, in a quite a bit of work uh, on, uh, I don't want to say that it's necessarily detailed work ne as much as it involves training or it involves kinds of uh, the kinds of things that um, really uh, bringing it to life by having it in 3D, I think makes a massive difference. Uh, it makes, <laughs> it does. It makes a tremendous difference, especially if you're doing like, manufacturing, assembly, um, remote maintenance, right? I mean, I talked to a guy who was taking these onto oil, uh, oil derricks um, and actually filming the pipes and the sequences in the control rooms before they even fly somebody out to that derrick, right? So that they can actually put it down. And, and then you can see, oh, wow, that valve really is far away. 
right? Because you, you have scale. You can tell, oh, that one's bigger than that one. That one's closer than the other one, which is something that you, quite frankly, don't get in 2D 360. I, w I would agree with you. And as I say, that's, that's, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I think that people aren't uh, realizing the benefit of having the 3D uh, uh, puts it in a, a different world. Um, and, and also, how is, the, how is the unit in terms of ruggedness? Um, so it's ex so extremely rugged. We are um, dust proof and water resistant. So I don't remember the actual, I think it's 48. Uh, I'll have to get back to you with the, with the right number, with the, with the weather ceiling. Um, but it is water resistant, uh, dust proof, shock proof, but it is not submersible. So you, you can't put it underwater. Although we do have some tricks up our sleeve for that one too. Okay. Um, but um, the, the camera itself, you wanna put it out in the rain, very rugged environments, um, no problem at all. Okay. And, and, and light sensitivity? So light sensitivity, it's a really hard one for us to quantify, right? Because, you know, I could tell you right now we got 16, 18 stops of dynamic range, but, you know, we're going from bright sunshine to deep shadows. If you're in inside, you don't have that range. So because we're dealing with multiple cameras and every one of those cameras ultimately has a different level of exposure and then we compensate and make that smooth throughout we can get these really huge dynamic ranges and still have very usable video much more effectively than you can with a single uh, image sensor and a camera um, but it's really difficult for me to quantify what that is sure. i guess that the shortest answer is if you think about low light performance because that's where a lot of people raise their hand and say well, what about low light performance right if, if you think that in terms of what a gopro camera can do in low light, we have a very similar uh, performance per camera. Oh, that's a good benchmark. I mean, that's, that's something that people, they're used to seeing it. <laughs> they're used to seeing it and they're like, you know what, hey, if it's dark, maybe I'll get some noise in my shadows and maybe I'll want to use something in post to clean up my shadows or something. Okay, same types of things uh, uh, go on here. However, um, like I just did, uh, I photographed for um, the Bat Fest. <laughs> which is uh, okay. underneath the, uh, the bridge here in Austin, there's uh, the Congress Street oh, yeah. Bridge. There's yeah. about one and a half million uh, bats that live up under the bridge. Right. And this time of year, they come pouring out uh, just past sunset. So I was down and I photographed on top of the bridge and underneath the bridge and did a bunch of videos. And uh, in fact, they're online. But um, you know, to, for, for me, the camera performed extremely well and, you know, dawn or sunset just past sunset dusk right and um again i haven't cracked it open my apologies but um oh, no worries <laughs> battery life uh what do you consider to be you know if you were going to run it continuously what would, what would be a smart thing to expect yeah so we're we actually are, are specking out at a, uh, about an hour and a half now in reality i'm getting about two hours worth of a battery life on it um, but when you get to the strict standards of the engineering side of things, right, they're saying an hour and a half. I'm getting two hours. It does take about three hours to get a full charge between uses. Um, so keep that in mind. However, most of my heavy shooters will carry um, a rechargeable battery pack and they just plug the camera in either between shoots or you can power it with a remote battery pack during record. Oh, okay. um, the, the one thing you'll want to do is get a 90 degree a USB cable, mm -hmm. because if it pokes straight out the side, it will get in your shot. But if they have a 90 degree, it kind of tucks down underneath. Um, I use Velcro to just Velcro a battery to my monopod, and then I'm done. That's a smart trick. <laughs> and then you just open and clean it all up in uh, in metal, or <laughs> actually now you're going to do it in Adobe Premiere, or in right. So yeah. yeah. So once once you're going to see with the software um, that you're going to use, the latest version, right, is you're going to be able to flip your horizon. So if you mount the camera upside down, hang it under a drone, or like I did when I hung it under the bridge uh, at Batfest, um, you'll be able to invert your video so it's correct. You'll be able to choose your center, right? Hey, I want my Very default important. field of view to be this. Yeah. Um, we even give you the ability to mask out part of your image. Let's say for a minute you only wanted to have 180 VR. Or more importantly, let's say I wanted to do two different 180s. I could 
make one clip 180 degrees of you know video A and then video B another 180 degrees, I can put those together in post. I use Premiere Pro for that. Mm -hmm. Now I have another 360 world again, but it's either two different locations or shot at two different times or whatever. But in the VR studio software, you'll have the control over the videos to do that. Okay. And, and then with the audio um, as well? So the control of the audio, so you have the option during output to choose either stereo or um, 3D. And when you output the 3D, so the Views camera has four directional microphones in it, each picking up a field. We use that to create uh, first order ambisonics, which is what you'll get when you choose the 3D. Now, before the purists start yelling at me and saying, but you don't have a microphone up and a microphone down. Right. That, that is true. Um, I will tell you that our strongest ambisonics is on the horizon. And we do have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a lull up and down. Um, obviously, we're trying to figure out the best ways to improve that. But think about that sphere and kind of pinning that directional audio around the outside of the sphere. We we can do that and do extremely well with that. So um, we still go ahead and claim that first order Amazonics. I'm, I would, yeah, I would be happy with that. <laughs> uh, I'll give you one more little piece. Um, so our our expertise is software. Uh, imaging science, right, and camera technologies. That's, that's what Humanize does very well. The whole audio component is relatively new to us. So we teamed with a company called Visisonics mm. and used their expertise to help us get our audio component right. So in addition to the Views VR Studio software, we'll also give you a six month license to um, a product they, call, they have called RealSpace. Um, and real space is their 3D audio to be able to script audio in VR. And you'll be able to take a mono track using their software, not ours, right? Um, yeah. You can take a, a mono track, let's say a horse going by, and you can script that around so you can hear it moving around in the headset oh, or gosh. everything else, which is really cool. Um, so that's there. but. On our side, in our in our platform, right, we used their technology in order to make that first order ambisonics without their software involved, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to open up that video file in uh, Premiere Pro using the output of 3D, you'll get four separate audio tracks. Right. Yeah. Great. And then work the and work the editing and so on and so forth right there in Premiere as you would for any other uh, V well 360. Wow. From from any exactly so there's a couple exciting things that have happened fairly recently. One's been around for a while, which is Adobe has put in the ability to have a 360 preview. So while you're actually editing the equa rectangular, you can go in and you can look around and get a feel for what your viewer is going to see at a transition. So I, I think that's a really nice tool. Um, Metal being acquired by Adobe, I think, is another big piece because we have a lot of questions around. What do we do with um, uh, titling or graphics or something like this? And I think that metal is a nice, uh, nice addition to that suite. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've just got. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and then I think the only other thing that I really wanted to push out on um, to just make you aware of. Um, is in this latest version of software, we're now also going to support um, Facebook's format for cube maps. Oh. And so you'll be able to output a cube map and very high resolution for, for full 4K left eye and right eye um, cube map, which gives you, by our calculation, somewhere between 18 and 22% more effective pixels. Uh, because we're not stretching in that echo rectangular where you have one pixel and you have to waste all that space across the top to kind of represent the, the zenith and the nidar. Uh, in cube mapping, because they're all flat planes, uh, it's a much more effective use of pixels and you don't have to do that warping. And so we have more usable pixels and ultimately higher image quality. So unfortunately, the ecosystem to support cube mapping isn't in place yet. So we're again ahead of the curve, but um, we know that we can drive better image quality using cube map uh, as a technology. So 
it's built into this latest version of software as well. That's very interesting. I, so uh, in essence, you could put out two versions of the file and. Um, Abs absolutely. I think that's what most people are doing or will do. Um, I don't know yet if I know that you can edit the video in Premiere Pro that's cube map, right? I've done it myself and you can see it. What I have not been able to do is put out a for a full 4K left eye, right eye, which would be the maximum resolution of the camera. Hmm. Um, and it just has to do something with uh, Adobe's ability to write a H.264 that's that size. Oh. Hmm. Because it's, a, it's basically a big rectangle and it's, sorry, I don't have the actual dimensions in front of me, but it's, it's like uh, 30, 3420 by something other like anyway I'll, I'll get you the actual specs on right on but, it's what more, right, but it's, it's a shape and 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 it's a rectangle yeah so it's a it's a it turns out to be a vertical rectangle and the top half of that is your left eye the bottom half is your right eye um but for some reason when i try to output out of premiere pro the best resolution i can get is 2048 by 2048 hmm which doesn't fit, but anyway, something to play with. And, you know, I'm sure we'll get tons of comments from, uh, from your viewers saying, come on, Jim, it's this simple. Right. Um, well, but we, we would hope, right? No, nah, we would hope, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe you have to output as a Cineflow or something. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. The, the industry, the, the exciting part is, is like we're in our infancy as an industry. Yeah. And most of this technology is not understood so it's not necessarily being deployed at its best, right? So there's two things that have to happen in parallel. One is people have to start shooting with the camera and figure out how to tell a story. Right. And then this is the story that they're creating. How's the best way to output that to get the best image quality given the distribution platforms we have today? And I think that Facebook is kind of leading the charge with new tech. Um, and obviously to support a lot of what they do with Oculus and, you know, their infrastructure, they, they really have been investing heavily, but YouTube is still a mainstay for everybody who wants to upload data and Vimeo wants to take a commerce part of it. And right. so if you're a creator, I understand it's got to be frustrating. I, I think, yeah. And, and that's, you know, there's, there's that side. And, and as I was, uh, you know, bringing out the whole other side where you have, training and education and um, these, I, I don't know exactly what to call them because they do involve storytelling. Um, I, I think they should and they do, um, visual storytelling, but I think that uh, the people who've traditionally done that kind of content work, uh, a lot of them are, are, they're still living with PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know. they are. But I, I'll tell you, I was out at uh, one of our major retailers and I sat down over the course of um, two days and trained about 50 uh, sales associates that did both phone work as well as they, you know, actually work in their stores. And the interesting part of that whole conversation was we can train more effectively in less time with better retention if we were to train you in a headset. Right, because we can give you an immersive experience. You can actually interact with the screens. We can, you know, you can make decisions throughout training that are individualized for you. And so one of the examples that I talked about during the training was if I filmed in linear video, a training scenario, right? My viewer does not have to watch that in a linear clip because I can go in and I can film several different scenarios. For example, if I put the key in the right slot, right, this happens. If I'm watching the video and I use something like either gaze detection or some sort of an input um, with a, a thumb control or, you know, something like this, where I can make a decision of which hole to put the key in, the video will automatically play to that new, that new segment. Sorry, I'm now my phone. Um, will automatically play to that new segment and I will get a different experience than anybody else who chose, you know, door number two, door number three, or door number four. And so it's kind of an extension of the whole branch narratives and storytelling. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. that when you start applying that to training and education, uh, government, law enforcement, like you can create an entire decision tree and a personalized experience without having to learn how to become a computer programmer, right? So that takes us the, gives us the ability to take real world and bring the real world to life in a headset um, that's never been possible before. I mean, it's been possible. You got to spend $95,000 and buy a jaunt or $45,000 right. and buy an Ozo, right? <laughs> or $800 and buy a Views camera um, to deliver what ultimately is the same image quality because we are defined by the quality of the headsets. Right. There, there's sure. not a headset out there that will play more than 4K worth of video. Right. And most of them are two and a half K. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Even yes. HTC Vive, like one of the biggest headsets, I think is only 1024 by 1024 pixels. Mm -hmm. Right. Now there's a whole ton of reasons to buy those headsets, right? 90 frames per second. They're bright. You don't have to replace the batteries. They're, you know, the million reasons to buy them. Um, image quality per se isn't the leading reason. I would agree with you. Um, yeah. and, and, and again, having, having used and worked with and at the same time trying to teach and implement <laughs> everything <laughs> from, um, you know, from the, uh, you know, from a, from Galaxy 8 with a gear <laughs> yeah. to a Vive, um, there, there are, there are perfectly good reasons that, that, uh, that you can produce viable content um you know without having to without having to worry uh do i have to have the top of the line as a, whatever the top of the line now my turn for air quotes my <laughs> um uh, the immersive experience itself in certain ways makes up for uh makes up for what you might say uh well the image quality when you look at it flat isn't uh, you know it isn't a 4k image uh, when you think of all the games that work with very low polygons and exactly immerse themselves in them for, you know, two hours. Yep. Uh, I, I think once you actually get into, and I'm going to go, I'm going to come off of the training piece and go into the narrative piece for a second. Okay. But, but once you actually see a video that's been created with a story that is engaging, then I think, the wheels start turning and you start to realize where the potential of this technology can go. And the, you know, one of my first experiences was um, a video that was part of the invisible series. And um, there was a, there was a segment in there um, where you, sorry, this is where we're going to put in the, uh, uh, I'm going to give away the secrets, I guess, but there's a part where you're, you wake up and get, Spoiler alert, there you go. Um, where you, you open your eyes or the, it becomes like you're opening your eyes, right? So you go from black and you come on the scene and you're sitting on the floor. And not only sitting on the floor, like you are like on the floor and you're like, why, why am I on the floor? It's really uncomfortable to be in a headset on a floor. And you turn around and in perfect 3D, you are face to face with a dead body and a pool of blood. And the impact of that in storytelling is so significant that uh, that's what's going to continue to fuel and build the, this whole interactive uh, environment and the creation of more and more content, which is going to drive headset utilization. And even if that's not the very best image quality, the point is, is that you get immersed into the experience where, you know what, if there was a stitch line, you're going to miss it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, because the story is compelling. Yeah. And the other thing I think that people don't realize with stitch lines is when you shoot in stereo, at least our method of stereo, um, left eye and right eye don't necessarily both have stitch lines in them, right? So you may have a stitch error in your left eye, but doesn't, it, it doesn't in, appear in your right eye. And it's amazing how smart the brain is to go, oh, well, that should be a straight line. And it makes it a straight line. You don't even see that stitch line. Oh, I'm glad you brought that point out. Yeah, it's really important too. I think because most people, they're going to look first and foremost as now we're sort of now we're going back to the very beginning of our conversation about this lines and all. Um, but yes, most people are looking at this uh, and trying to do a judgment based on looking at a flat, um, even if it's just on the phone. Uh, they're looking at a YouTube version in flat, or they're looking on on a single screen as opposed to in a three D 
and yeah. that, that that puts unfortunately puts you at a disadvantage in a certain way. But uh. so going keeping that full circle theme going, right? Um, what we've added into the software, which I think you're going to really appreciate, is once you add the auto stitch, which is what we've had in the software from day one, right? Is we analyze and we find the stitches and we we correct for them the best that we can. However, we know people may walk through a scene or the computer may estimate a distance uh, and focus on the wrong thing and stitch for the wrong thing. So what we've put are little sliders for each of the stitch lines and you can actually dial in specifically where your subject is. So if your subject is 6.3 feet away, you can slide the slider or just literally type in 6.3 feet. Um, and then it will stitch for that point in space and eliminate the, uh, the stitch error entirely. Now that being said, I will tell you, uh, there are four danger points on the Views camera, right? So if we look at the front and you're looking at the lenses, left and right eye, yep. you can get very close, right? I can get probably down to about 10 inches and I can stitch this no problem. Good. The danger, the danger comes on the corner, right? Okay. So this, for example, being a left eye, and this being a left eye, this is my danger zone. So it's when we switch from here to here. If I'm in that danger zone, I wanna be about one and a half meters away, call it five feet. If I'm five plus feet away, we can correct for that in post. If I'm really close, unfortunately, there's a blind spot right here, um, really that goes out to about two and a half, three feet. So as long as you're conscious of your corners, in your corner placement. Um, we can correct for just about any stitch. There is a blind spot in those four corners. The good news with us is we know exactly where they are. They're very predictable. And if you plan from the beginning, then you won't have a problem with stitch lines at all. You know, some other camera solutions out there have cameras at different angles or they have many, many different cameras. So then you got all these really wonky stitch lines you're trying to deal with. Yeah. Ours are vertical and they're predictable. That's great. Um, anything to close out with that um, um, might be on the horizon above and beyond, of course, you know, revealing the new software and um, adding in the uh, the ability to to have that audio uh, piece come in as well, which is sort of a that's a bonus. By the way, I didn't realize it at all, and I'm glad to hear about it. Yeah, it is a bonus. Unfortunately, one of our best kept secrets. We got <laughs> we have to do it better. We're, we've been focusing so much on uh, really addressing the customer's needs and making sure that we're delivering the product that they expect that some of the very basics, we've quite frankly, maybe haven't done the best job to communicate that we even have that benefit. Um, so I guess the other one to kind of keep an eye on, and the only reason I'm saying this is because it's been kind of leaked a little bit out there. So I don't want to get myself in trouble with the company or whatever, but let's put it this way. We have heard that there's a lot of interest in live streaming, right? Yes. Um, and, and please know it's an area that we're looking at. Okay. Um, for us, we look at the total um, customer satisfaction of streaming, right? Streaming is part of it. More importantly, getting the data out of the camera, getting it stitched is getting it up into the cloud, right? And that's the piece that I think is going to really become a stopper in a lot of pieces in a lot of places because we create about one gigabyte of data for every one minute of recording. Yeah. Nonetheless, um, we'll, we'll tease you a little bit with some, with some thoughts around live streaming. Um, and there's no reason not to buy the existing views camera um, because we will obviously take a look at all of our customers. Um, so no need to hold off for a new model. That's, that's great. That's perfect. <laughs> now I've, I'm sure I've gotten really myself in a, <laughs> I'm sure I've gotten myself in a ton of trouble for over speaking, but um, anyway, um, it's in, please know that we're at least paying attention in that area as well. That's great. That's great. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll formally close. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's that after on other things, but I want to thank Thank you so much for your time. And, all right. uh, and, and all of the, uh, um, the uh, I wouldn't say giveaways, but the um, uh, important information I think that people want to know about how to, how to really get the best out of the camera. Some That's tips great. and tricks. I'd love to come on and talk with you anytime about tips and tricks. 
the next couple of weeks I'm traveling. I'm going to head off to uh, Berlin and go to IFA. Very good. Um, I really hope to create some content there. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to share some of that together with some of the work that you're creating. Um, I'm going to head over to Israel for a little bit and then I'll be back. But, uh, you know, reach out anytime, hit us up on Facebook. Uh, I'll do my best to help you if you have any questions while you're unboxing the product and, and diving into virtual reality video. Great. Thank you so much. You bet. <laughs> my pleasure. Great speaking with you.